26 January 2024 and a very good morning to you all. Today I want to talk to you about uh, history repeating itself and I want you to compare this uh, with the situation today in South Africa uh, since 1994. And uh, always please remember to press that like button, subscribe to our videos and share our um, videos to as much people as possible. Right, uh, let's have a look here. Uh, who said history forgotten is history repeated? Uh, is a gentleman here called George Santanyana. Those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. And this was in 1905. Why is it so important to remember history? Studying history allows us to observe and understand how people and societies behave. For example, we are able to evaluate war, even when a nation is at peace, by looking back at previous events. History provides us with the data that is used to create laws or theories about various aspects of society. We do the same in business. Um, you know, if, if you do a business project or you've done a demo, you always have a, a debrief afterwards. So, yeah, it's it's a uh, it's something you, you keep on doing to improve your environment and your society. Let's see here, what other famous quotes about history? We pick up here from Winston Churchill. There's two here. Uh, history will be kind to me, for I intend to write it. History is written by the victors. Right. Uh, who said history never repeats itself, but man always does? Who said history never, never repeats itself? But man always does. Very interesting. This French philosopher, Ultar, once said, History never repeats itself. Man does. That human behaviors most often remain the same. Take note, our politicians. Human behaviors most often remain the same. Okay, this brings me to the situation or the topic I want to talk about today on the 26th of January 2024. I want to talk to you about the Petra Thief delegation uh, that went to meet Dangan and the massacre that followed in 1838, 185 years ago. And that's not too long ago. All right, so with this uh, Petra Thief delegation, um, we see that 100 foot trackers um, went to go and see Dangan uh, in the KwaZulu uh, Natal, South Africa. And uh, this took place in 1838, in the month of February. Upon realizing the ramifications of the imposed contract, Dingaan betrayed the foot trackers, killing their delegation, including Pete Retief, on the 6th of February, 1838. The land treaty was later found in Retief's possession. It gave the foot trackers the land between the Tugela River and Port St. John's. Retief, his son, and the men and servants, around 100, were killed by the Zulus by clubbing them. And Peter Tief had witnessed this. He was the last to be killed. Their bodies were left on Kwamatiwana hillside to be eaten by vultures and scavengers. The attack is thought to have been premeditated. And it was unlikely that Dingan was going to concede the land through treaty in the first place as he, Dangan, believed the land was divinely inherited, despite the agreement. Right, a reason cited by a few is that Dangan was, almost, was also promised horses and guns, along the return of his cattle. When Retief turned to give the cattle to Dangan um, and did not give him the, any guns or horses, this is what triggered, understandably, the massacre. After the Retief massacre, Dingaan directed attacks against several unsuspec unsuspecting foot tracker encampments, including the one at Blokrans. This plunged the Great Trek into disarray. In total, 534 men, women, and children were killed, at, uh, known as the Wien Massacre. Retief's, uh, Retief's death and the Wien Massacre eventually led to this decisive foot tracker victory at Blood River, after which Andres Petrus and his victory commander recovered the remains of the, the Retief party 
and they were buried on the 21st of December, 1838. The 21-year-old Jan Gerspeinkis, uh, this was now Retief's former secretary and now Pretorius' secretary, recorded the battle, the entire December campaign in the Beinkis journal. Recovered was the undamaged deed, the session of Natal, and from Retief's leather pouch. The deed of session was signed by Dingaan on the 6th of February, 1838, with two sides recording three witnesses each. Um, Dingaan invited Retief's party to witness a special performance. Of course, then the, the Dingaan then leapt to his feet and ordered his soldiers to capture Retief's party and their coloured servants. Uh, when the entire Fortrecker party had been massacred, the Horde of Zulus returned to their king and held him by shouting repeatedly, wipe out all the Fortrekkers. We will go and kill the white dogs. It is reported that Dengan ordered a few days after the massacre, massacre that he had dispatched half of his entire military force to go and attack the Fortrekkers' camp. They were instruct, instructed to kill all men, women and children and bring back their possessions to the king, Dengan. If we look at the events on Kwa Matiwane, the most reliable evidence um, on, on that day, the 6th of February 1838, indicates that Retief, his companions and their servants were overpowered, but were only killed on the hill of execution. This is now Kwa Matiwane. After being dragged there, uh, on a Okay, they were dragged there, it was about 800 meters north of Dengan's stronghold. Outside the circle of huts, the victims were tied up with tongs, and then they were, okay, they were still alive, and a sharpened pole was driven up into their bodies, so they were impaled. It was very painful, unbelievable. And the victims were carried upright on these poles, which made it easier for them to be hit and this is uh, shocking to hear that Retief's heart and liver was cut out and presented to Dagon. This is stuff we don't, we don't get taught when you're at school. Uh, you have to re research this stuff and pick it up. Okay, the events that uh, took place after the massacre uh, um, of Peter Retief and his delegation, this led obviously to the Battle of Blood River and the defeat of Dagon. All right, so I've just given you a brief on Dengan's um, situation and what turned out um, with Peter Tief. How do, we do com how do we compare that today where we are? Um, if we look at the party, if we look at the negotiating party in 1994 between the Clerk and um, the ANC, Political leadership in the ANC, where Cyril Ramposa was present, um, I can see a similarity there with that constitution and the agreement in Condesa, Condesa agreement, uh, in line with this session of Natal, not being adhered to, and of course the uh, battle at Blokrans, uh, uh, the, mass the weird massacre. I see that as the anarchy phase of our country. They're moving to, and of course, the Blood River sees a repeat coming down, down the road in the near future. Right, so yeah, that's what I can pick up and I wanted to share with you all uh, how I see this thing, that history is repeating itself. And then of course, decision time, do you have a plan? Do you have something in place? Um, and if not, we should strongly suggest you join SBB. The joining links are below and thank you very much and we'll talk to you again. Be safe. Cheers.